Hello everybody, it's that time of year again to talk about the Crystal Brush finalist pieces. So as you know, if you've been a longtime fan of the channel, uh, Crystal Brush is a miniature painting competition that happens at the Adepticon uh, game conference uh, every year in March, and it's that time of year again. So Crystal Brush is obviously a, a wonderful miniature painting competition put on by Cool Mini or Not, and part of this competition, because it's uh, you know, of the fans, by the fans, for the fans, as it were. Uh, there's a public vote uh, portion to this competition. So in addition to the judges voting uh, for our pieces and scoring everything that we do, uh, there's also a part where the public participates. And so that's what I'm here for today, to show you the pieces that I have that uh, made it into the finals and that you can vote on. There'll be a link down below that you can go to and uh, make your voice heard uh, to vote for me or to vote for any of the other great pieces you see. Uh, and so I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Uh, and thank you very much for taking a look. So let's get into the pieces this year. All right, so here we have the single figure category. So uh, famously this year, Crystal Brush combined the science fiction and fantasy categories into a single category that's just single figure of like what we would think of as infantry size. And so this is obviously the old Ick Claw model, uh, renamed as the Arch Warlock. Uh, I love this model. It's always been one of my favorites going way, way, way back. And I just wanted a chance to uh, to paint it and see what I could do with it. I've been inspired by other versions of this I've seen in the past. And so I thought it'd be fun to give sort of my take on it. Uh, what I wanted to explore here was interesting, you know, color contrasts with sort of the orange of the copper with the purple and the green. I really like those colors, but I also wanted to play around with things like lots of different non-metallic metal and, and really try to make them all work in harmony. So we have, you know, gold and copper and silver uh, non-metallic metal. I wanted to play with some weathering and light pollution so you can see some of the weathering is I, I wanted to be minimal with it this guy is you know he's a high muckety muck in skaven society so he takes decent ish care by skaven standards of his armor but there's still some little bit of weathering here and there and uh i wanted to play with you know light reflections and pollution in the metal so you can see the green getting reflected up in things you can see the yellows and the browns of the sort of environmental light being cast into the the silver that sort of thing so this is a really fun piece to paint. Uh, I love this guy. I'm, I'm ha very happy with how he turned out and I'm happy that he's uh, a finalist. Next up, Fire. Fire is the is my chibi entry this year. Uh, I do love chibis. I don't normally get much of a chance to paint them because I'm usually working on, you know, armies or, or something like that. Uh, but I really do love this, this fig. Uh, when I saw this originally, you know, I had been looking sort of after last year for a fun chibi, something that motivated me. I like doing vehicles and tanks and stuff. I think they're really fun. And when I saw this uh, girl tank commander in the little chibi tank, I was all about it. So I, I picked this up and, you know, this was just a fun chance to work on some unusual on an unusual miniature. Uh, once again, I wanted to really play around with exploring different high, high, high contrast non-metallic metals. So you can see, especially in like the copper gun tip and the barrel there, stuff like that. Uh, obviously, as always, Chibi is a great chance to work on, you know, skin and eyes and hair and lens reflections, just all sorts of little fun things to do with this this miniature. So this one was really a lot of fun to paint. I even snuck in little Imperial logos on the tank because in my mind, this is, you know, a, a Warhammer 40K chibi version of the tank. So I thought that was super fun to do. And uh, I'm very happy she is a finalist. In the bust category, we have Midnight's Watch. Uh, this bust comes courtesy of AMSA, uh, which I, as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted it and I wanted to paint it. I do love this thing. Uh, I did a couple different videos on this, exploring things like uh, painting a bust. I did a bust painting 101, as well as uh, discussions on stippling with this. And that's really what this was. Uh, the reason I wanted to paint this miniature so much was because I was fascinated by the chance to explore textures on this bust. I really think this does a great job because you have, you have flesh, 
you have some kind of wool cloth, you have steel, you have like a lamellar type of leather, you have a soft uh, leather, you have, you know, hair and uh, wrappings. It's just like, it's, it's so many different things all at once that I thought it was really a cool chance. And, and as soon as I sort of saw this thing and the way she's posed as though she's about to draw her sword, like it's popped out just the slightest edge. Like clearly her thumb has knocked it out of the lock in the holster and her other hand's about to draw it. Uh, in my mind, it's like I jutsu style to grab it and spin around. Uh, but the, I knew I wanted to have her it, at night in this extremely cool palette with the moon behind her, you know, sort of casting this ephemeral blue light and uh, really, really play with that kind of a, a, a tone and a palette and cool everything out. Even the, you know, this sort of like warm red leather, I tried to cool it down with mixing in blues and stuff like that. And so this was just a really fun chance to, to explore that kind of a, a, a concept. Uh, and then obviously I, I thought the background would be a, a fun touch to actually then show that, that moonlight and that sort of thing. But I like how this one came out. Um, busts are always a, a very tough category, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be uh, a finalist in this one. All right, here we have the Queen of the Deep. Uh, this was a model that I was really excited for. So this comes uh, specifically from um, this comes specifically from a game where these are the heroes, right? And I'm I, I love the idea that that something that looks like this is the hero of the story. And I knew as soon as I saw this one that it was up my alley because it had this sort of almost like slaneshi feel to it right of it to me felt like this thing wearing a human suit almost right in the way you can see the the extra pieces put on over like the ball joints that connect it and so i really wanted to to do lots of things here can i could i make the flesh seem both fleshy but also then where the illusion has cracked because you know the 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 it's not actually soft skin, but it's it's some sort of, you know, uh, plaster or, you know, clay or some kind of, uh, I can't think of the actual substance, but you get what I mean. Like an actual hard substance that's meant to look like skin. And can I show it cracking from exposure and things like that? Uh, so I wanted to, to play with that. I really wanted to play with cold, green, non-metallic metal uh, to tint and make this whole, you know, she's the queen of the deep. I wanted to make everything feel like it had that ocean turquoise tinge in it. Uh, this was also a great chance to play with translucent cloth, which I always really enjoy to get that sort of sheer fabric, which again makes the dress feel wet, which again makes her feel like she's, you know, part of this. Uh, it speaks to that, that narrative of her being from the depths and picture her always sort of being sopping wet. So I really, really liked the way this one came out. Uh, I was very excited for this figure when I first saw it, and I was thrilled to, to get a chance to paint it. Uh, and I'm very glad that uh, it got enjoyed and got selected. So there we go. So that is all the submissions I had that were finalists. Uh, I thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, for hearing my thoughts behind this. I like to do this just not throw up pictures and say, hey, please vote for me. Like, that's cool. I appreciate you voting, you know, scoring my stuff and, and, and or checking this out. But I also just like to do this because these pieces all mean a lot to me. And, you know, every one of them represents 100 hours plus of my life. So I feel like it's it's good if I can communicate to you what I was going for and why I did the piece and why I love it and what motivates me about it. So I think that that's an important part of the hobby journey. You know, why did I decide to sit down and spend 100 hours, you know, or 120 hours, like two to three work weeks of my life on something? Uh, and so I thought that was good to share. But thank you very much. As I said, the link's in the description below where you can go vote and score uh, both my stuff and everybody else's. It's worth checking out. There's so many great pieces. It's, it's an amazing year. Uh, so I do encourage you to go do that. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this. As always, it is greatly appreciated, and we'll see you next time.